there. He found out whether it was something that would work in Utah as we grapple with drought. It's early in the morning and Salvador Polanco Gomez is at work. It's starting to cause some runoff. Looking for water waste. Which is prohibited in Southern Nevada. Uh, things like coming off the property, leaks. He's a water waste investigator for the Las Vegas Valley Water District. It's a government job where they look for and enforce violations of watering laws. It's every day there's water waste. Um, you know, we see it. Um, some people do, some people don't. You know, we're trying to get it to completely stop, but, you know, we're doing every effort we possibly can. Nevada has restrictions on outdoor water use, time of day, day of the week. Once water from a sprinkler system hits the street, it's considered wasted. That's what they say is happening at Guido Husing's yard. It's called runoff. Mm -hmm. Right. And as you can tell, the grade of the property, I can't control runoff. Mm -hmm. No, I'm within my four minutes uh, uh, cycle from the uh, sprinklers. He isn't getting a citation, but he is told to get his sprinklers fixed so they don't waste any more water. The water restrictions I don't feel are that bad. You know, we, uh, we're down to three days a week. It is a little tough to fighting the HOA because they're always on our backs to keep the grass green. Husing says he gets why things are so strict. I've seen Lake Bee from when I first moved here 10 years ago now to the levels that now, and I understand it. I really think the government needs to stop housing construction, stop the influx until they can initially discover or de develop a plan for what they're going to do with the water situation. In another neighborhood, there's this problem. There's probably leak in the bottom. So you're just telling them you need to get the base. Correct. Yes, at, at, at this at this case, they are going to get a letter. Most of the time, water waste investigators only issue warnings. You can see the overspray into the sidewalk. Polanco Gomez says often homeowners are unaware there's even a problem. Sometimes they don't know and they do schedule education events, which one of our uh, the water waste investigators takes do come out there and um, recommend some changes it could be run times it could be like sprinkle heads uh low flow sprays making his way across the sidewalk but it is recorded and repeat violators can be fined they are subject to fines uh, which start at 80 up to 5,000. nevada has passed tough laws on turf and water we prohibited uh, installation of lawns in front yards. We limited the landscapable area in backyards uh, to 50%. Uh, we uh, had uh, watering restrictions by day of week, uh, time of day, uh, by seasons. Uh, and recently, we've gotten even more aggressive, and now we've uh, banned non-functional turf. Uh, we've prohibited the installation of new turf, except for schools, parks, and cemeteries. Uh, limited uh, pool sizes, uh, and pretty soon we're going to have a, an excess use charge. It's because they simply don't have the water to spare. Ninety percent of southern Nevada's water supply comes from the Colorado River. Really necessity. Uh, Nevada has a legal entitlement to 1.8 percent of the Colorado River. Uh, so for the last you know 20 plus years, uh, we've had to uh, adapt uh, how. Uh, we grow a city in the desert. You'd think the Las Vegas Strip would be Exhibit A when it comes to water waste. The number one use of water in Southern Nevada is single-family residential homes. 60% of their water use is residential. Uh, people you know, look at the Bellagio and think that's the poster child, but actually the resort industry in Southern Nevada uses one-tenth of one percent of all the water that's available in the state of Nevada, and in return for that we get 25% of our direct employment. Indoor water use in the Las Vegas area is recycled, eventually winding up here in the Las Vegas Watch, a newly created wildland habitat, and back into Lake Mead. The restrictions didn't always used to be like this, but local water authorities say they need to be more strict to ensure a reliable water supply for the Las Vegas area. It's showing signs of success. The Southern Nevada Water Authority reports a 26 billion gallon reduction in water use over last year, stretching the water supply a little further. This will say they've cut overall water use by 26 percent, while adding 750,000 people to the area since 2002. That's in addition to the estimated 40 million visitors who come to the Las Vegas area each year. Put another way, the agency says it's a 49 percent increase in population, but a 48 percent per capita decrease in water use. The population here can see like me. They can see, you know, that that 170 foot decline over the last 20 years, and so they know uh, they need to do their part. This used to be a popular bay where boats would launch here at Lake Mead. As you can see, it's all dried up.
happened earlier this year about the same time they turned on some pumps to continue to ensure that the area gets water that they need. What that gives us is the ability to access Lake Mead even in a circumstance where the Bureau of Reclamation can't physically release water through Hoover Dam and deliver that water downstream to California, Arizona, and the country of Mexico. These pumps were built as a sort of insurance policy for the Las Vegas area. Earlier this year, they cashed it in. It guarantees the physical availability for water for 2.3 million Nevadans, even in a circumstance where the federal government can't deliver water downstream to 25 million Americans. States along the Colorado River have seen their shares cut as Lake Powell declines. Nevada's governor doesn't believe it's temporary either. But like the situation with the Great Salt Lake, Governor Steve Sisolak says he believes states like Utah can follow Nevada's example when it comes to conservation. Well, I don't know if it's a draconian, but I do believe that all states should look at what we did here. You know, we're recycling. Uh, reclaiming and reusing all of the water that's used indoors, at least 99% of it. Uh, we've removed non-functional turf. We've put other things into place to try to preserve more water. And I think that uh, we set the bar pretty high. Guido Husing says other states should copy what they're doing. All the aligning states along the uh, you know, Colorado River corridor need to do as much as we are, if not more than we are, because they seem to be you know, less restricted than we are. He's now looking at making some changes. I really should do my due diligence and call the uh, the out of water to see about the rebate system to get rid of the grass. That was Ben Winslow reporting. Coming up tomorrow night, what else the Las Vegas area does to incentivize people to get rid of their lawns and what Utahns should consider replacing their lawns with to help alleviate the problems within our own state. Salt Lake